Do you remember the Dymexion house, designed by one of the most interesting minds of the 20th century? A mind belonging to a human form known as Buckminster Fuller. And it was one of the more interesting houses that was supposed to be mass-produced, prefabricated. Unfortunately, most of the other examples of prefabricated modular houses in history looked dull. Something like this. Houses that were supposed to be built in a factory and that then just brought to the site and assembled, installed, like a bench in a park. It's a cool idea, logical one, rational one, but in the old times prefabrication meant repetition and simplicity. That is how you save money. Henry Ford famously said, any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants, so long as it is black. That is how you build social housing, fast and cheap. And that is why the design usually suffered, and sometimes the quality as well, because maybe they tried to save too much, so public perception of prefabricated houses was never really positive. In time and space, prefabricated housing has a pretty uneven distribution. Logically, it was popular when desperate times struck and people needed roofs over their heads fast. After the Second World War, for example, modularity and prefabrication became popular in Europe and even US for a while. People needed houses as fast and as cheap as possible. In United Kingdom, houses like this flourished and some of them actually did not look that bad. However, in most places they did not stand the test of time because the quality was not up to the level and the design was dull, as I have already said. So it's not a new idea. For at least 100 years people thought about mass producing houses like you would do it with a car. And not only that, but they tried to make modules that you can combine and stack, like Lego. Makes total sense, right? And modularity is very appealing. Although you have repetition, you do not have to be boring. Moshe Safdi proved that with prefabricated concrete modules in the Habitat 67 in Montreal. Today, prefabricated housing is not gaining a fair share of the market. At the moment, it is successful only in Scandinavia and in Japan. Of course, Japan, the first country that one thinks of when we think of minimalistic modules stacked together, like in the famous Nakagin capsule tower. And of course, we have to mention Singapore, where all public housing must be built using modular techniques, despite the relatively high availability of labor to meet the housing demand. But they must note something we don't. Their students are always first in the world on the PISA test, and together with Japan, they have the most powerful passport in the world. So, not that that is relevant here or connected, but it has to be said. But I digress. So, aside from a couple of spots on Earth, again and again, people have come up with modular concepts and prefabricated houses and tried to make, make their case with the standard arguments. So, let's see what these arguments are and if they are true. Prefabricated houses are cheaper. Well, yes, the McKinsey report from this year talks about 20 to 50 percent savings that can be achieved with modular prefabricated buildings. Prefabricated houses can be built fast. This is common sense. The construction time can be compressed up to 50 percent. Single family houses can be built within days instead of weeks or months. And whole buildings can be uh, erected within weeks instead of months or years. The Little Hero apartment building in Australia was built in a month. Or we have this six-story apartment building that was assembled in just 10 days. Prefabricated houses are of better quality. At the first glance, this is a bit counterintuitive because we think of prefabricated houses of, as some container type trailers. But no, today's prefabricated houses are indistinguishable from uh, the on-site built ones. And yes, they are of much better quality because they are built in a controlled environment, in a factory, and not out in the snow and rain where a lot of things can go wrong and a lot of mistakes can go by unseen. Prefabricated houses are more stable. Another counterintuitive one. With prefabricated houses, we imagine some jiggly structure screwed together that can collapse with the first gush of a strong wind. Actually, no. Again, because of better control. In Japan, modular homes have an enhanced seismic performance in comparison to the regular ones. If you can weld or connect the elements in a controlled environment, it will be more stable. Prefabricated houses are more green, so more sustainable. Prefab structures are very sustainable because they reduce the amount of waste produced. How about the downside? Prefabricated houses are boring and simple. Really? Check out this prefabricated house. And again, not only prefabricated, but modular. So you can actually combine different modules and create whatever you desire. And the arguments go on and on. And you might say, wait a minute, prefabricated houses are built faster, they're cheaper, they're of better quality and their design does not suffer? 
So they are better than the standard way of building in any way, and yet they represent only a very small percentage of the market. So what's the catch? What is that horrible downside that you're not mentioning? Well, there is logistics, because the modules have to be transported to the construction site. But that is not an obstacle that cannot be solved. And aside from that, there is no catch. That's why I'm telling you, yes, the future of architecture is prefabricated and modular. It might also be 3D printed, but we will leave those methods to compete with each other. All I know is that building on site for months and years with very complicated site managements, with pollution caused by construction, with injuries and fatalities on the construction site, with the noise that goes on for months, how we are building now is very archaic. And I guarantee you that in 5, 10, 100 years, most if not all of architecture will simply be brought and installed, assembled on site within hours, days or weeks, depending on the size of the project. So what is the problem then? Why aren't we progressing? Well, civilization progresses pretty slowly. Construction is one of the most conservative businesses out there and it takes eons to make steps forward. Another reason is the mistrust people generally have into modular and prefabricated houses because of the history. They were usually, they were usually designed for social housing, very cheap, very repetitive and of bad quality. But this time that all has changed. We have parametric design and automated production. That means that modularity can be brought to the next level. Now when you want to order a shelf or a table or a sofa for your apartment, you have all these companies that offer online configurators so that you design your own piece of furniture and they deliver it to you. So it is at the same time unique and prefabricated. So you have the best of both worlds. Is there a reason why that cannot be done with a house? Absolutely not. And I'm not the only one recognizing this. The big brothers like Amazon and Google are investing a lot of money in companies that offer prefabricated and modular housing. So mark my words, you will see a lot more of that coming in the following years. And I'm excited because parametrics and automation can be nicely applied to some unique crazy looking objects as I have been doing in my practice. But I think it is even better applied in quasi repetitive modular construction. Exactly because the better we are at automation, the less repetitiveness we will have and we can achieve full design freedom and yet have modular and prefabricated houses at the same time. So unique and prefabricated and modular. And this is when the word modular gets turned upside down because we are talking about the possibility of modular buildings where every module is kind of unique, challenging the very definition of module in its conventional form meaning almost the opposite of what it meant in the last hundred years. But this is where we are right now. With programming and automation, we are holding the wheel. We can create parametrically entire buildings, divide them into structural modules, uh, get them ready for fabrication with a click of a button, assemble them in a factory with robots or humans, and connect them at the site within a fraction of the time we need now. Now, I made at least 10 claims in this video that could branch out into whole video series. And I will address those things in the future. Here I just want you to stop and think. Think that modular architecture that has been old news for the past century might actually for the first time in history become actual news. It looks like it's time. This article for example will show you some basic factors that could guide the market toward the modular. And it will tell you that early adopters of modular construction will likely be the construction leaders of tomorrow driven by several circumstances. So let the race begin. Share, subscribe, stay free. If you want to create your own cool plugins like Voronax or any of our other plugins, I can teach you how to do it. And if you go to proarchitect.teachable.com, you will see already some of the courses there, the Rhino Developer C++ course or the Rhino Developer C Sharp course. Uh, you will get small C++ and C Sharp basic courses with them. And in the future, you will get to see a lot of other courses on similar subjects. You can enroll the, in the course, you can see all the explanation here. You have more than 10 or 11 hours of video. The first couple of videos are free where you can check out if you are able to download the software and create your own plugin. And afterwards, there is a lots of lots of uh, videos explaining all the basics of the development for Rhino so that you can create your own plugin.